Hey everybody. Sorry I've been going for a long uh, while here, a month or whatever the hell it's been. Um, I've still been doing things on Patreon, teaching uh, people over there, but um, fell off the uh, fell off the uh, content wagon there for a tiny bit because I hurt my back. I had some health issues and still have that stuff going on. The AC in my house isn't working right, and I live in Florida, and if you haven't noticed, the earth is catching on fire. <laughs> and... Um, just some weird shit. I didn't have internet for six days. I have it now, but it's still being a little bit weird. Could be because the earth is catching on fire. Global warming. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, uh, I'm back. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to sing on your bridge. So on or above or right near your bridge because it's a problem and it's very difficult. And I'm going to go over some things in different ways about trying to do that. Don't always mean to be talking about, you know, mixed voice and things like that. But uh, it is what people tend to reach out and question me about the most. So I want to try to give you some help in those directions. So um, if you want to have some new ideas about approaching those things, if you have been working with another vocal coach and you want to hear some other unique ways to, uh, you know, go about trying to find these things in your voice, then this video is for you. Uh, Let's talk about it. All right, so I have not been singing in a while, um, even though I have to sing a bunch today, because like I said, my health has been a little bit weird and messed up. I apologize for uh, talking about that, but it is important to note. Um, as we get into this, when we talk about your bridge, and we, you know, passaggio, however you want to go about it, we're talking, of course, about the part of your voice where we're going, ah, and you're breaking. Um, it could be that you're breaking a little bit below your bridge, could be that you're stretching a little bit beyond your bridge and you're able to, you know, tear it up. I don't know what you're able to do, but uh, um, either way, we're talking about that part of your voice where your voice has a tendency to crack or break. I want you to try to start thinking about your bridge like a physical place in your voice instead of this elusive, weird, like, why does it do that, whatever kind of place. And when we think about it like a physical place, my students will have you know, (laughs) they'll say that we're thinking about it like a physical bridge, which is the hard palate and the soft palate. So right on the roof of your mouth would be your hard palate as you move back towards where the uvula hangs down, we have your soft palate, uh, which is, you know, soft because it's movable. If you heard my dog right there, he was gagging because he's chewing on something and he's um, got problems. Anyway, uh, so think about it like that. Uh, Why we're thinking about it like that is because when we're building pressure from the diaphragm, from however you're singing, incorrectly, correctly, we're building pressure, and singing is a pressure game. We're tension and release, and we're we're utilizing that, and we're working against it, sometimes with it, etc. As that pressure builds, and we do not let it up into the nose and the head, etc., or we're not letting it into uh, basically what we'll refer to as head voice, which most people know. If it's not allowed to move up into there, that pressure will continue to build up against the hard palate, and then our voice will will try to stay together, and too much pressure builds, and then it breaks apart into falsetto. So essentially, your bridge can most likely be associated with your hard palate, because that's what we're building up against. As we talk about this, and as we dive into this further, you should recognize again, when or start to recognize whether it's closing your eyes when you're practicing or when you're singing or whatever you're doing paying attention and being very cognizant very perceptive of the subtleties of what's happening and how much pressure you're building up into that place how much pressure you're building here in your vocal cords everything like that you need to pay attention to this and as i've said probably hundreds of times now the the best thing i can do for uh, a student or for somebody as a vocal coach or whatever the hell i'm supposed to be <laughs> is to plant seeds in your mind so that you become more conscious of the experience so that instead of 10 minutes every 10 minutes you go oh am i breathing correctly every then it's every 5 minutes oh and then you have to consistently remember these things and be uh, perceptive of it and uh, and be conscious of what's happening in the body so goes without saying that this is an important area that most people struggle with um As I mentioned, if we're pushing up against the hard palate, then that means something needs to deviate and something needs to happen when we get too much pressure building in there. If you haven't already followed along with courses like this and videos like this that I've made, um, that pressure will either start to fall out of the face, so ah, like this in your whole body and everything will start to go like this and try to accommodate that pressure on a muscular level, 
or if you can do it more correctly, it will move behind your soft palate. Meaning where your uvula hangs, there's a hole, if you've ever seen somebody stick a spaghetti noodle or something up and then drop it down and <laughs> that gross stuff. There's an opening in the back of your throat there that allows you up into the sinuses. It allows you pushing pressure up into the sinuses. So we need to learn how to utilize that and how to uh, acceptably let that happen and stay open and not build tension the same way that we were talking about before. And like I said, I'm going to take you through a couple of different exercises for that and just keep relaying a lot of information into your brain. Some of it you'll catch, some of it you won't. Try to watch the video again. Try watching some of my other videos. You'll get this over time, but it's not going to come today. I uh, <laughs> pretty much guarantee you that. It's going to take some time and some practice, especially if you've been singing heavily in chest for a long time. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to say this now too. One of the things that we're going to do, well, let's do it right now so that you don't have to keep listening to me say things is that the resonance in the body, we, we refer to chest voice as chest voice because it resonates in the chest. Uh, I can feel my chest vibrating. We refer to head voice as head voice because it reverberates in the head. So if I want to get from here to here, there's nothing I can necessarily do. And there's no form of trickery or whatever. I have to allow that resonance to move like a thermometer up through the body. Now, an important way that we can experience this or that you can experience this, whether you're good or bad at any of this, is to take a siren and go from, let's say, here's a middle C to a high C. And that's probably going to be decent for females following along too. Uh, if I go into falsetto, meaning my chords break apart, that's another part of the tension release game here. If I just do that poorly, uh, one more time. Uh, I should, if I, like I said, close my eyes, whatever I got to do, I should be able to feel that line of resonance move from here up to somewhere. That ball of resonance, like a thermometer, should be moving in the body. If you do not allow it to move, that elevator that's moving like this will get stuck. Uh, and then it couldn't go up anymore. If you're loose enough, like I said, even breaking into falsetto, uh, I can still feel where it wants to go. Mixed voice, anything you're doing, that resonance is going to be moving and it wants to happen. If there's a note outside of your range, say my bridge is right here and it is, F sharp four. <laughs> right? If I have a note then two or a whole step over that. I know that that's above my physical bridge. That doesn't mean that I, ha I can only use head voice. I can get there in other ways, but I know on a physical level that the resonance wants to sit probably somewhere above that physical bridge. So if you're thinking about it like a diagram, I would be just about here. Can we feel that? Can you do that? If you're a baritone, you can do it with me. Uh, Okay, I feel the pressure right about here in my head. Ah, so I'm over my bridge. And I'm over the moon. Ah, 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 ah. So there I'm mixing to get there. But either way, the resonance is going to the same spot. Now, if you're getting confused or you're like, oh, well, how do I do the heavier stuff or whatever? As we learn how to access different muscle groups or we learn how to manipulate this sound, I can pull that resonance back down or I can push it further up in my head. That's kind of the part of this mixed voice thing is, is blending the two areas. But I can try to grab a hold of it. Oh, right there. Oh, even though the sound was over my physical bridge, I was using more musculature or vowel shape to pull it back down and have it sound more chest voicey. Make sense? Either way, it wants to go somewhere, which is the point of all this. So we're talking about how to sing on your bridge. Let me bring my, let me collect my thoughts. So, first of all, again, as we, we talk about all this stuff, if you're going here, then we're pointing to the nose right now, which means that you are going to have to become nasal to get there. There's no other way to do this. There's no, I mean, you could try low larynx and oh, and sounding like an opera singer or something like that, but that doesn't tend to work with a lot of people that are following me or, or you know, requesting information or looking up information. They're looking for rock singing, pop, things like that. 
Um, so anyway, we know that we're right here, so there's going to have to be some kind of nasality that kicks in. Uh, so that, therein lies pretty much lesson number one with this, is that are you able to add nasality to your sound? Um, is it pointed? Is it tiny? Are you able to stay open? Uh, there, I'm letting my voice be where it needs to be. So also, if you are forgetting, if you have a note outside of your range, find it. You don't need a piano. And then siren up to it. See where it wants to sit. On another level here, to break this information down one more way, because this is newer information I don't talk about too much. If that resonance is moving like this, and we're following it, all right? On a muscular level, as you learn how to mix, you learn how to, you know, do these tr things that I'm doing. You're learning how to follow it with your musculature. So that means that instead of it just happening from here, ah, uh, like that, where the muscles are just, ha everything that I'm doing right there is just happening from here. As I learn how to mix, I'm learning how to trace those muscles and trace that, that uh, resonance up higher into my head. So I'm learning how to go, ah, uh, I'm learning how to take the muscles from down here where my vocal cords sit and then use them the whole way up. Uh, now another good thing to pay attention to here is take a mirror or a video or whatever watch yourself try to do exercises like this if you watch my physicality you'll see that my body's not changing that much it's going to be a little bit happening in my neck but there's never ever going to be this uh there's not going to be a widening of the the mouth or the jaw there's not going to be tension kicking in and my fucking veins popping out of my head or anything because everything is just going further into the head if anything pull your head down to allow that resonance to move back up behind the soft palate and up into the head that's what we're allowing to happen even if you're going from head voice to chest voice or chest voice to head voice oh 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 that is more correct than uh, something like that. Ugh, I hate that. And it happens. Anyway, um, so let's talk about nasality. I've talked about this plenty of times. I don't want to harp on it. I don't want to give people the same, you know, information over and over again. But again, let's take uh, UNG, but we're going to add an ah to it. So UNG meaning like French ah, like this. So you should feel that back where the uvula hangs down. Now we're going to take a siren again. And as I've said a whole bunch of times before, we can go tension with it. And pay attention again. If your body starts doing this, if your body starts doing anything like that, you're going down the wrong road. You're letting your voice glide. Should be nice and light, and you're trying to keep yourself relaxed. That also does not mean, and this is why I say use a mirror, that you should be going... <laughs> <laughs> and that your body should be going like this and you're trying to keep yourself stoic and, and untensed. It means literally that you're... Uh, and I'll show you one more time. If I'm distorted, which like I said, I haven't sang today, but if I'm distorted and starting to really go heavy with these sounds, my physical body should still almost be the same as what you're seeing right here. Uh, So, you see, I'm, I'm not moving. There's not a lot going on. I'm just putting my voice where it needs to be. So, uh, what the hell are we talking about? We're talking about nasality. So give me nasality first. Let's do it in a simple, small scale. Keep your head down. I see. Now you hear that every time there, kind of rocking back and forth between, but I'm not jumping between chest and head. I'm just making that sound. Don't think about singing. Don't think about how good it sounds. Don't think about any of that. Just make the sound. Just make the sound. Just make the sound. So now as we go back down, I want you to give it a little bit more of an ah, so that we're getting the jaw out of the way and so that we're trying to keep nice and relaxed. Ah. So if you're thought about, am I too nasal or whatever, you're probably just pointing everything too much and making it too pingy. 
eh, but that's your ex new, possibly new uh, experience of nasality because you haven't maybe done it that much. We can be nasal and open at the same time. Ah, uh, I'm just letting res resonance up into that space. So it's U N G. Ah, uh, you should feel your placement to move backwards and sit like that where the uvula is, and then ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, ah. Uh, Should be able to move this jaw. Two more. Let's do two more. I know I've said this plenty of times too, and I'm sorry to keep saying that, but um, you're going to be, if you're, if you're really struggling with this exercise, you're going to be met with the, the dichotomy essentially of too much tension, too little of tension. What you're hearing me do is take the tension that otherwise would have built down here, and every time I get closer to that bridge, I'm handing it over to the nose. Aww. So there's actually a little bit of faith based uh, information here or uh, practice in that you start to recognize your nose and pharyngeal space as a usable, very uh, good part of the voice, not just a separate, stupid, cartoony, hey guys, how's it going, kind of thing. We're, we're starting to have faith that is a part of the, the, the voice, and we're starting to use it and recognize it and appreciate it instead of, like I said again, thinking of it as a goofy, like, oh, that's bad, I'm, that's not good, or you shouldn't use that, or whatever. So, again, I'm taking that, uh, and I'm letting it go up to where it is. Even if you're kind of breaking in a falsetto, uh, keep tracing that line, following it, and paying attention to where it's going to go. Now, when it comes to singing right on your bridge, like I said, keep planting siege in your mind. We know that your bridge is right there, so we're going to have to bring some of that nasality in. Even if it's a lot of nasality, Pay attention to the difference between your pressure that you would have otherwise built down here. I should be able to shed some of that tension simply by bringing my head back down and by going nasal. So one of the songs I love to make people do with this and one of the challenges and ways that you can challenge yourself with learning how to sing right on your bridge is by finding songs that are right on your bridge or a tiny bit above. When it comes to mixed voice and things of that nature, um, finding songs that are outside of your range, and I mean fucking outside, not two notes above at this one part, she or he hits a high note. I'm talking about finding things that challenge you to do these things on a physical level and, and really find it. Um, Hotel California is one. Um, Eye of the Tiger is ridiculously hard to sing, even for the people that wrote it and then people after that. Anyway. Uh, I think that I think that's almost all here, or it could be an F sharp four, uh, sharp four. Yeah. Um, if I sing that, YouTube's gonna recognize it and then make me have to have problems with copyright. Anyway, rising up. So if I can lightly go in my bridge or right to my bridge, rising up, out back on the street, took my time, took my chances, rising up. Back on the street, took my time, took my chances, went the distance. So right there, I have to navigate. I have to navigate that area, and I know that I can't have any enunciation or very light enunciation. So there's another part of this. I want you to take an E vowel, and I want you to move it close to your physical bridge. E and you're going to feel that thing happen, right? So your voice is probably going to start to build in too much tension, and then we're going to break. E and see and watch, even just on a little bit. E you see how my face starts to go like this, and everything starts to change? So that's, that goes against everything I was already preaching, right? So now I want you to take that same E, get close to your bridge, and change it over to an A. So I want you to see that E as a vowel like this, and then we're going to turn it on its side and open it this way. E, 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 e,
Yay! Yay! Like that. So we're taking and getting rid of the jaw. E should be resonating through the jaw. E like this. But when we take that and we go vertical, e a e a e a, we're taking that out of the equation. This this can't exist above your bridge. When you get close to your bridge, this these muscles cannot engage anymore, or they're going to anchor and bring you back down. Meaning that these muscles are not. They're up below your bridge, we'll put it that way, on a muscular diagram level. So when you get close to that, they already are starting to engage because they're trying to help keep your vocal cords together. And then when you're above, they'll just pull you right back down. E like that. E Not there. Make sense? So e e e e e this is called vowel modification, but I just want you to feel this, and I want you to especially feel the the way that the jaw's interacting with your sound. So we can take it like this. Let's do the same scale. And what I want you to do there is I want you to figure out where the pressure starts to build. When we learn how to mix, we learn that we have to mix kind of quite a few notes before we get to our bridge. We cannot get to our bridge and then go Dah! and then open the, the valve back up or whatever. This is another part about singing on your bridge is learning how to mix before you get there, learning how to shed tension, learning how to coordinate yourself into another place. Doesn't mean that you're gonna sing in two separate kind of places all the time and jump back and forth, but it may feel like that for a while. E again. See where you can change the E over where it needs to change. E my voice the, the just ever so slightly that e tension e is making my voice go up and flip over to what it needs to do e Now, another part of this that I try to often explain is some people will tell you supporting all the time. You got to be supporting and all that. With these exercises, I'm actually not really supporting because I'm just making sound, which is important again to notice that if you are having trouble with this, I would not go and start trying to push and push. Um, you're going to probably get further away from what needs to happen. You're making these sounds in a playful, kind of interestingly stupid way. You're just trying to make sound then as we can make that sound or we can make it singy We we add support we should be supporting all the time when we're singing when we're learning how to sing though Sometimes we need to shed certain parts of this essentially This is what's allowing us to build pressure and to carry through and to whatever But this is only going to add pressure to something that's already not ready to be pushed into uh, I've explained it before like there's a crack in the wall and we're trying to push through that crack um, it, it doesn't matter if the rest of the analogy works or if I go through it, but we can't go pushing against it or it's going to break apart. Your vocal cords, meaning they're, the, they're uh, and then it just breaks because we can't go pushing pressure there. They're not ready for that yet. So is there more information I can share with you about this? There always is. Um, let's take one more stab at this and I'll take you through this. How to sing on your bridge. Uh, again, notice that something needs to shift, something needs to change if we're close to our bridge. And, and it's not more pressure. It's actually the lack of pressure. It's a backing off the pressure. It's pushing the clutch and learning how to get through that. So if you're feeling your voice get more more loud or more wide or whatever, like you saw me do, uh, like with the E vowel, we're going to take it and we're going to go this way, which is what you also heard me do with the vowel modification. E e it, it's compressing. I'm not thinking about squeezing or whatever. I'm just correcting with the vowel. As I do that, I know that something needed to change, so I back off the pressure a bit. I know that I used to go this way, now I'm going to go this way and quiet it down. I'm going to back off the pressure a little bit. Another way to do that is by adding a lower larynx to this and learning what that feels like as well. So if I get closer to my bridge 
and I recognize again that I'm starting to go like this. I can't say this enough times, it feels like, with students as well. Um, and across the board, we're talking older people, females, younger people, rock singers, um, all over the board. Anyway, if you can feel yourself start to go like this, it's not going to work. Something is going awry. You need to back up and center yourself again. Ah, it should be nice and relaxed. It doesn't mean you're going to have the most relaxing experience. It just means that you're keeping yourself centered and you don't need to go like this. <sighs> so um, as I get closer to my bridge, once again, there's a dichotomy. There's a difference between ah, and my larynx lifting, my physical body changing, and me pulling the larynx back down. Ah, that was me lowering the larynx. It goes towards opera, Pavarotti, uh, you know, some maybe musical theater. Lowering the larynx will help to elongate the throat, meaning instead of it going this way, oh, and the pressure builds like this, we're taking it and then going, oh, and we're taking it like that and elongating. In a sense, we're making it smaller, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. So, uh, I, I've done this a whole bunch of times. O to O is my first uh, inclination towards this. Oh, if you can't get this to work, I want you to fucking yawn. Oh, now the important thing to remember here, if you're being conscious and perceptive of what's happening, is that we're paying attention to the difference in how that feels. If you're used to, uh, we got to get this feeling, oh, and start to notice what's different there. Oh, that helps. That when I feel that tilt down, that's what I should be feeling instead of the other one. And that was a big breakthrough for me. Oh, oh. Now I'm not even putting that much yawn in there. Oh. There, I'm being a lot more kind of tense and ridiculous with it. Oh. But you hear I'm gliding right over my bridge. Oh. If I come back here to, let's go above my bridge, way above it. And come back to Eye of the Tiger again. I could approach that with those lyrics. Rising up back on the street. Took my time, took my chances. There I'm being more Michael McDonald. Hey, baby doll, like I'm lower larynx. But you can hear that I'm singing right through my bridge. I'm not in head voice, so I'm not going, rising up, back on the street. And I'm not going, Rah! I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. I'm actually able to sit right on my bridge. And then I can guide myself through that, warm up through that, see what works and what works better for me and what kind of stylistic sound I want. I tend to go heavier, so I might cry into the sound or put more of a mixed sound into it. Rising up! But there's still those other components happening. Ah! This lower thing. And ah! I would say one more part of the advice here is that if you want to challenge yourself again, drive everything through the nose as much as you can. Get a handle on how to slide around with this and how to how it works a little bit. And try taking phrases from a song or a whole song. Drive that whole song through the nose. Rising up back on the street. Took my time, took my chances. Went the distance, now I'm back on my feet. And uh, like I said, I don't sound that great today because I haven't sang in a while. But I'm driving everything through there, and I'm actually not having that hard of a time. Should be able to take it higher than that. Rising up! Back on the street, took my time, took my chances. Went the distance, now I'm back on my feet. And na 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 na, it's the eye of the tiger. There again, I'm just pushing as much and and acclimating that pressure that otherwise would have been here up here, and I'm able to sing right on my bridge or over quite easily. It might not be your best sound or your most sexy thing anybody's ever heard, but that's how you do it. That's how you find it. And then if you keep working at it, you'll start to even it out. And it'll make it sound a lot better. <laughs> I hope some of this helped. If you want to join me on Patreon, I'm always teaching more over there. If you want to take lessons with me, you can go to sterlingrjackson.com. You can book right through the website. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry I've been away for a while. Sorry if this lesson was a little bit all over the place. But just getting back to things and trying not to be in pain and be an old man that's falling apart and falling to pieces. I will see you soon. <laughs>